Hi, I'm Dr Darren McEwen and today we're going to demonstrate a treatment with some Botox. Botox is now the most commonly performed cosmetic treatment worldwide. If you're considering treatment with Botox, however, you might want to spend some time doing some research to make sure you find not only the right clinic, but the right practitioner to do the treatment for you. When it comes to injecting Botox, there's this very important scientific part to doing the treatment. But equally, there's also a very important artistic part and it's important that you find someone who is willing and able to tailor the treatment to your face so you get the best results. Today I'm going to demonstrate, using Carol here as my model, how we assess the face with Botox and how we perform the treatment in order to optimise the results that creates not only a rejuvenated result but also a natural one. Okay, so the most important part of any Botox treatment is the initial assessment of the face. Now I realise that sounds uh, very basic um, but it's amazing the number of people who don't spend enough time doing that and therefore make the wrong decisions as to what they're going to do with the face. So the first thing we do is we just have a basic look at the face and see if there's anything that stands out about the face that we don't like. The ideal female face, everything should just blend together nicely. We shouldn't have anything that stands out. So for example, you, you don't want any cheeks that stand out at the face, any lips that stand out at the face, but equally you don't want any deep lines and wrinkles that stand out at you either. Um, I've been working with Carol's skin for a few years now and we've pretty much eliminated any deeper lines and wrinkles. Um, so our forehead now looks relatively smooth and there's nothing that incredibly stands out at us. Um, the next thing that we need to assess is the position of the eyebrow height and this is where most people make their mistakes when it comes to Botox. Carol's eyebrow height is sitting just at the level of the orbital rim or the brow bone just above the eye. That's where eyebrows should be sitting. When it comes to Botox, people have a habit of elevating the eyebrows on everyone. But that aesthetically, that is the wrong thing to do. In the lower face, as we get older, everything falls down the way. And people make the mistake of assuming that the same thing happens in the upper face, but that's not the case. As we get older, in the upper face, everything goes up the way, so the eyebrows get higher with age. And if you don't believe me, the next time you see an old lady in a nursing home, look at the position of her eyebrows. Her eyebrows aren't down here hanging over her eyes. The eyebrows are quite high up the forehead. So if you make the mistake of creating an eyebrow lift in someone who doesn't need it, despite the fact you've given them a smooth forehead, you will still make them look inadvertently aged rather than more youthful because you've created something that wasn't there naturally when they were younger. And that's one of the most important things to do and to bear in mind when we're doing Botox treatment. We're not trying to create anything that was never there in the first place. We're trying to restore things back to how they were a few years previously. So the position of Carol's eyebrows are actually perfect. So it would be wrong if I was to try and do anything that looked like this. All we need to do is um, keep things looking soft and natural. So the last thing we need to assess with uh, Botox is any expression lines or what we call dynamic writings. So Carol, if you just raise your eyebrows for me. So when Carol expresses, we can see that she does have some uh, lines that come across her forehead. And if you give me a big smile, Carol, again, this is probably Carol's biggest problem area and the one that she complains of most. And when she smiles, she gets these lines around the corner of her eyes, which she doesn't like. There is a little bit of skin laxity coming round towards the lower eyelid, although it would be wrong to put Botox there. And the reason for that is this muscle under the eyelid holds the fat pad in place. If we relax this muscle with Botox under here, it, will, um, it allows the fat pad to bulge forward and creates more puffiness under the, underneath the eye. You can get away with doing it in some younger patients who've got minimal laxity in the lower eyelid, but I know if I do that to Carol, it's going to give her a bag under the eye which she wouldn't like. So we're not going to, we're not going to come any closer to that lower eyelid than what we call the lateral canthus here. We are already undertaking a couple of other treatments to try and tighten up some of this skin for Carol using some, something called fractional laser. And so far we've started to achieve a bit of tightening, but we've got a couple more sessions to go there. So I'm going to start doing some markings now of where I'm planning to place the Botox on Carol's face. So Carol, can you frown for me, please? Okay, 
and we can see that our frown is actually still very much weakened from the last treatment, which was five, six months ago now. Um, but we will freshen up that area nonetheless. So give me a big frown. Okay. So the next thing we're going to assess is the forehead lines that go up, that run horizontally across Carol's forehead. So Carol, if you can raise your eyebrows up for me. Now normally we have two separate bands of muscle, one on either side of the forehead, that usually meet somewhere in the centre down at the bottom of the forehead. In Carol's case, the muscle fibres on either side are connected the whole way up, and so to achieve a nice, smooth and even result, it's necessary to treat the, mu the, the forehead muscle all the way up in the centre as well as laterally. So, Carol, if you just relax your eyebrows for a second. And then if you raise them up again for me. Okay, and just relax again. And raise them up again. So what I'm trying to see now is what proportion of this muscle I want to relax using Botox. I don't want to take out the entire muscle because if I do that she won't have any movement left. I want to leave something behind that's going to give her enough motion that she can move her eyebrows up and down and still maintain some facial expression. So I'm going to take out a band of muscle that looks something like that. So she's still going to have a little bit of inferior muscle movement to be able to lift her eyebrows up and down. And relax your eyebrows for me, Carol, and lift them up again. The last thing we're going to look at is the dynamic wrinkles that Carol gets when she smiles. So Carol, if you can smile for me, and we can see that this band of muscle is very, oops, pencil's broken, is very strong and hyper-expressive between these boundaries here. So we're going to do a series of three injections, one, two, and three. And that's going to smooth out that area for us. And then again on the other side, give me a big smile. And we're going to do one, two, three injections. Okay? So, Carol, if you just have a lie down for me, we will go on with the business of injection. So, the next thing we're going to do is carry out the injections. So, the injections are carried out using a very small insulin syringe. These are the same needles that diabetics use to inject themselves with insulin each day. So it's very small and virtually painless as it pierces the skin. When the Botox comes as a drug, it comes in a powder form, which we then reconstitute by adding some salty water to it. When I'm reconstituting it, I always go for a very concentrated solution. And the reason for that is that I just need to inject a bit less of it so we get less bruising and swelling afterwards so Carol can go straight back to her immediate activities immediately afterwards. So I'm going to start off in the frown lines. And Carol, just a little sharp scratch. That's the first injection. How did that feel, Carol? Fine. The injections are almost entirely painless. So this injection here is quite deep and this one here is very superficial. Just so we are being very anatomically precise in where we're delivering the drug. The more precise we are with the delivery of the toxin, the better the results will be afterwards because the more predictable it will be. So the next injections I'm going to do are just around the crow's feet area. Now Caro has quite a few small blood vessels just beside where we want to place these injections. So I'm being very careful to avoid those when I'm inserting the needle. And then I'll just come round to the other side and do the same again. And as you can see, Virtually no marks left on the skin at all from where the needle has gone in. And 
And lastly, I'm going to inject the forehead muscle. If we hit those blood vessels, it's not the end of the world. It's not going to do anything untoward to the result, it just increases the chance of bruising. And because this is such a regular, no downtime procedure, we want to minimise any chance of bruising at all. And lastly, I'm just going to put on a little bit of Arnica, which is a homeopathic treatment to minimise any bruising afterwards. The treatment itself really is virtually pain-free for most people. Um, even people who have needle phobias, you just close their eyes, forget what's happening, and um, most people are able to cope with it quite okay. What will happen now is Carol can go and apply her makeup again so she can leave the clinic and go straight back to doing her normal activities. And then over the next two or three days, she will just gradually start to notice that her skin becomes a bit smoother and those wrinkles around the eyes begin to disappear.